part one. The disassembly of the lower unit. It's got a shaft in it that's making a lot of noise. So I'm gonna take this all off of here. Got the camera recording. Yep. There's some snap rings here. You got something to put all these parts in? I have a magnetic tray that I'll grab. That'll just pull out of there, I imagine. Yeah. Clip. Washer. Yeah, I think it's actually good. That bar, that whole bar can slide on out. Yeah. I'll have to probably wiggle it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Well, that's not bad at all. Okay. This one that's hanging on there's not. <laughs> so there's the bar. Okay. The gear shift. Alright, so this linkage right here. Oh, that's almost fallen off. It's rust that's holding that on. Really? Yep, the clip came off. It's it's rust that's holding that washer. Look at that. There was no clip. It was just the washer. Really? So that could have slipped out of gear and we would have been stuck. That was okay, so right now we have the shift linkage undone. Maybe get in there and get a close up of it. So this is the linkage right here and all we had was a washer holding it on. There should be another clip or a pin going through there. So luckily that stayed. So next is to pull these six bolts on the side. So a 5 8 fits on there nice but a 12 point might strip them. So use a 6 point. We'll give it a try. So a swivel for the five eighths. Big flat screwdriver. Here's the inlet for the water right there. Yeah. These something thicker than this movie. It's going. This thing here. We could put the pin back in and use the hydraulics. The hydraulics would push itself out. And it would hold it too. Yeah, okay. Cool. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's working. Okay, now wait. Okay. okay. There it's turning. So three eighths of an inch hanging out to put it back. Yeah, because we'll have to get that back in the same position. Mm -hmm. Good thing we didn't pull too hard because I felt no, it, yeah, get, it get tight on the shifter. Turn it one. Yeah. So there's Is the little piece that out? needs to come out. The the hole for the pin, it looks like the pin just corroded away and fell off. <laughs> okay. It doesn't feel too bad. Doesn't it? No. This whole thing is going to come, right? Yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's not too bad. I got it. I got it. You're stepping on the floor. Oh, okay. 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 I, I got on it, too. Okay. 
off of the, we need something underneath here to, so you could, if you turn, you want to turn this here to see how it is. Well, let's just. Those joints actually feel good. Look at there's a grease joint there though. Look at oh, that. Yeah. How would you ever get at that? Uh, you wouldn't. They feel good. So the next thing is, how about the bearing that's up there? Okay, so there's a bearing up inside here. Oh, that's what shot. It's rough. That's what's making a lot of the noise. You gotta check the boot anyway. Yeah. And then this boot right here, lift up on this, because... I mean the exhaust comes down through the here? Exhaust can come through here and on out of the bottom of the engine. Ooh, right up there is where the exhaust can come out. So this is exhaust and these maybe should just be replaced. And what but goes through there on there? Uh, this is where it picks up its water. Oh. So right here. Right. Let's see. It seals yeah. in there. Yeah, it seals all up against this surface right here. And this is where it pulls the water from right is here. Is there a roll ring in there or something? The O ring is right here. This is the seal, right? I bet you that's where it's leaking. Right there. <laughs> so this is where it sucks its water, is here. Yep. And then this is for the shaft, but that shouldn't have water in it. And then this is for the exhaust. So we're going to pull this whole case off here and replace both the boots and that bearing up there. So here is your trim control right here, indicating on your dash. So we need to pull these off, and then there's a bolt here. Uh, you got your shift linkage here. There's a bolt right here, so we need to pull this bolt, pull this clip, and then the shift linkage can come out. Right over here is where the water intake is, and there's a big plastic nut that needs to come off. So that's the next step. 5 16 fits it nicely. Hmm. I always thought Volvo was British. A little overkill using an impact, but I'm taking things apart, not putting them together. I'll use wrenches and ratchets to put everything back together. So this is the pickup. Let's turn the steering wheel. Okay, so that comes out of there. All right, so to get these pins out of the side, you need an adapter like this uh, that fits the pin, and then it's got just a regular, looks like it's a... half inch socket with a breaker bar to get onto this part right here. And I'm gonna be pulling down on this. So I'll use a wood block right here to keep this from pivoting on it. pins look like looks like a little loctite down there in the threads looks good okay so right here there's washer that could just stay there okay. What size is that? It's a uh, 3 8 Like on purple, so the last left you clearance there so you could rotate that ratchet. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so that little clip comes out of there. And this is your shift linkage. The shift linkage will now be able to slide through. That looks like an inch and three eighths to fit the water intake. That turns pretty easy. So that plastic.
plastic nut comes off of there. put this nut on here just a little ways to keep from damaging the threads and then just hit this nut with a hammer there nut tap back in okay that's loose Use a pair of snap ring pliers to get in here and I have to compress that clip. That takes a seven sixteenths. case <coughs> stainless steel hose clamp that needs to come undone there's a hose clamp on that but I think we can leave that but this has an o-ring on it that needs to be replaced and then there's also a hose clamp back in there this one you can get at from underneath so to get to those hose clamps I'm going to use a 5 16 socket and a lot of extension so I can come up through the side of here and that reaches the upper hose clamp real easy okay and well, this has a drown clamp on it too okay, there's a Where, what see if the... I can show that So right here, there's a ground clamp, and that sits like that on that hose clamp. Okay, and there's this hose clamp, which I think I can get from the bottom. So here's the bearing that's bad. You can see some of the rust that's in there. I'm also gonna replace the seal that's behind the bearing. See the, uh, the splines coming off the engine back there. And I want to grab a hold of the bearing first because there's a seal behind it, but I want to pull the bearing so you don't want to go in too far. So we'll give it a couple of whacks. That came out a lot easier than I thought it would. Same method. Better grip. There it came. There's the seal. I should zoom out. So oh, here's the seal. So in this case, instead of using that bell on the back side, if you thread this up far enough, it also expands these jaws too, which gave me a little better grip. So here I'm gonna put the new seal in, something like that. The part number on it is 18-8349. It says oil seal replacement OMC 911795. Next one is three eight five two five four eight. Okay, so I'm going to go inside here with the the seal ends up going in there in this direction. Okay, so like that, and they 
they obviously recommend grease in the inside, but on the outside, they want you to use some type of a sealant. I'm gonna use this ultra black gasket maker on the outside here, just a little bead. That way this forms a good seal up against the aluminum. It doesn't take very much, just a little bit to seal up against there. Got a big socket. And what I'm gonna do is I want this flange right here to ride on that flat surface right there so I don't damage it. I need to make sure I drive that in nice and straight. So I'm first just gonna try and get it in here with my fingers. Just a sec, look and see. Looks good. Okay. Get on as square as you can. So here's the, the bearing for it. This is, or if you're looking for the Sierra model number, it's 18 2100. It just says use marine grease only. So if we compare, this is the old bearing with the new bearing, they look really similar to each other. And you can also order this bearing in a sealed bearing or one that's still greasable. I prefer one that's still greasable so that I can grease it every once in a while. But you can get the cheaper uh, bearings for this that are about half the price that are just a sealed bearing. But I don't trust those lasting for, for too long, not being able to grease them. Tell them about the grease joint and lining up that. Oh, okay, hole. yeah. So what we wanna do is make a mark where that hole is for the grease cert. Um, so we used a permit marker, made that mark right here on the outside so we can see that. And we're also going to do the same thing to the bearing. We're going to take, slide this. You want to slide this case so that you have that hole opening there. And this is the piece that should be facing you where those notches are. So what we're going to do is we're also going to put a marker, uh, a mark on the side of there lining up with that hole there so we can line it up when we pound it in. It's not tipped. Yeah. There. Yeah, hit a little bit down there. Yeah, this is the better way to go. Yeah. Because it wasn't that tight. So what we found worked best to drive this bearing into here was actually to grab a block of wood, give it a little bit of a taper to it. That way you can go in here and you can tap there tap at the top, kind of just feel your way to get that bearing to go nice and straight in there. So that was a little bit better method. Now we're gonna go ahead and try putting some grease in it. As I grease it, you you turn it okay. and, and see if you can feel the difference. Yep, that's good. You got, so we hit the hole. <laughs> yep. yep, so we got grease coming actually out of the bearing. So we got grease around it and in the inside. good okay so the next thing I'm doing is I have the the upper bellow cleaned up so it's good and I put a little bit of um, sealant on there again I used a little bit of that ultra black gasket maker right up there and then I have some new stainless steel uh, hose clamps that I'm going to use on there okay so 
sit on there nice. Baby. Sure, the first one's insane. Anyway, well, okay. here it goes in easy. <laughs> <laughs> right in there. I don't know if I can see that or not. So I replaced Yep, there you go. Okay, let me pull back on that draw. Let's... 